So, hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. What an exciting topic we have to discuss, holiday shopping and how to map your e-commerce content to the customer journey. Are you, are you excited to start? I am. So, let's start from the very beginning. Let me introduce you. Who is going to speak to you today? So, first it will be me, Elena Kozlova, a content marketing manager at Pushwoosh. If you're not familiar with the brand of Pushwoosh, let me tell you a couple of words. First of all, it's an advanced customer engagement platform that is appreciated by customers all over the world. Second, it's an experienced team of dedicated professionals that have worked with clients from across the industries, including e-commerce. So whatever I'm going to present to you today is tested in real world. So be reassured. Then I will be joined by Barbara Santos from Rock Content, our experts in content creation. Barbara, I'm glad to see you here. Will you please introduce yourself and your company in a couple of words? Hey, Elena, thank you so much for having us today. I am very excited to be here uh, to talk to you, to share a little bit about the, the backgrounds of content marketing for the holiday season. Rock was founded in 2013, and throughout the, all these years, we have helped over 2,000 brands and marketers and agencies to deliver outstanding content experiences to their customers, to our customers, always powered by innovative content marketing solutions and creative services. Our mission is to enable growth opportunities to all of our stakeholders, our clients, our clients, clients, and our talent community as well worldwide. So glad to have you here today. So we've got quite an intense agenda for today. So let's get started. Uh, let us take a strategic view on e-commerce customer journey first, where I'll be sharing some approaches and techniques that will help you improve your strategy for this holiday season and achieve better results at each stage of your customer journey. Well, what is the holiday season for e-commerce companies? Probably the most wonderful time of the year when online sales peak. You may recall what it was like last year when e-commerce boom happened, when all, all the customers had it to the online for shopping. And imagine this year we're going to experience even another 10% year over year growth compared to those impressive numbers of 2020. What's interesting is that gone are the days when the holiday season was a sort of a dotted line between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Yeah, it was Cyber Monday back then, not Cyber Week. And then we had this all end of the year holidays. Now it's quite a straight line, which may start as early as mid-October and will last till the end of the year. And all of this happens on the background of huge industry growth in general. We can see e-commerce growth and especially m commerce I mean, mobile commerce growth. Well, it could be the most wonderful time of the year. If along with the sales, it wasn't the returns to peak as well. And we have some data that states that returns grow even higher than sales during the holiday season. Then it gets quite complicated that the holiday season is quite long now. So it's become quite impossible to promote sales during the entire season. So it has turned it into a major selling season when brands have to come up with more creative offers rather than simple discounts. And then, although it's a great thing that the industry has grown, but it means that it, it's not just your e-commerce brand that had a chance to grow. These were also your competitors to grow. And also these were customer expectations to grow. So it looks like it's not quite a winning season of the year. It's more of a win or lose game. And surely you want to win. The question is, how do you do that? Certainly, you want to take a customer-centric approach. You may have heard so much of these word combinations, I'm sure it's turned into buzzword, but I want you to be very precise on what you mean by, cust by customer-centric approach. You want to know what they're searching for. And the first thing is good prices. 
Well, it may sound like nothing new to you, but the most recent research of PwC has shown that prices have increased in significance dramatically. They even exceed other advantages and conveniences of online shopping that e-commerce stores may offer. Then, on the second place comes great customer experience that customers are searching for and greater convenience. And it may be interesting for you to know that customers state they are willing to pay more to those brands that accommodate this. And let's not forget about that lost joy of traditional holiday shopping. Remember even you as a customer when you used to arrive in the shopping mall and you would enjoy, you would absorb that uh, Christmas and end of the year holidays atmosphere. Maybe you would even spend more by being high on that holiday spirit. It's all gone, unfortunately. And the question is, what can brands do to satisfy those increasing customer needs? Well, as for good prices, it's quite a tricky question because it's challenging to keep interesting prices and discounts during this longer period. Will it be great custom experience then? Well, for better and for worse, in e-commerce, it may all come down to mobile messaging. For better, because you have a chance to influence it directly. For worse, well, because if you neglect it, it's going to go in the wrong direction. Just let me explain how it may happen. So normally, you may return a customer back to your e-commerce app with a push notification. Then hopefully they will open they will open it and you will have some products to recommend to them. And then hopefully they will proceed to checkout. And with other messages, you may help them complete the purchase, even if there is something, some technical um, imperfection that you have on your checkout page. Even then, you still have a chance to um, facilitate the purchase with prompt messaging. Then, fortunately, if a customer has accomplished uh, their purchase, you may want to send them uh, order confirmation details, and then you want to accompany them throughout the delivery process. And then when the parcel has arrived safely at the, your customers, you want to thank them for their purchase, and you want to send them a promo code for another purchase, and you want to ask them to rate your experience, and then the cycle will repeat itself. So it looks like it's hard to overestimate the role of mobile messaging. You may think that its primary goal is to convert. Well, you, you, you will be right to say that, but it's not the only goal that mobile messaging can help you achieve. Before you arrive to the point of conversion, you want to engage and re-engage your customer. You want to ensure the best shopping and purchase experience including that recreation of the lost joy of traditional shopping, if you can. Then you will convert your customer and then you will want them to retain with you for next purchases. So it looks like mobile messaging can cover pretty much the entire customer journey, except for the acquisition. But here I want you to ask yourself, are you sure that this holiday season you want to target uh, the acquisition stage of your customer journey funnel. Because acquisition costs that have got as high as ever during the entire year, they have skyrocketed and they always do during this quite still short holiday season. And you will be pressed to fit the time frame to advertise specifically for the holiday season. And then, on the other hand, you'll have those restrictions imposed by operational systems, all those limitations of IDFA tracking, etc., that make your advertising either less probable or even less effective. So probably you may want to take another strategic move and focus on engaging your current customer base. Well, you will be rewarded. What we know is that repeat customers are nine times more likely to convert. And moreover, specifically on the holiday season, they're going to spend 25% more. Does it sound intriguing? Well, if I was an e-commerce marketer, I would be certainly intrigued. 
So the most important part here is to define specifically who our retained customer is. And here I suggest you get as granular as possible. You want to analyze all the detail you have on your customers. You want to categorize them depending on their purchase history. So because certainly you want to treat your frequent buyers differently from those who have only been browsing products in your app. Or maybe you have VIP customers who have always been your most valuable customers. And maybe you have some category buyers. They only buy products of a certain categories. And here you may do any kind of segmentation, anything that is possible based on your RFM data. Then you may want to pay attention to uh, how your customers engage with your app and specifically with your mobile messages. Do they open your app at all? Do they click on your notifications or they tend to ignore them? Your communications, your further communications with them will depend greatly on these parameters. And then you probably you will find some customers that don't open your app regularly, although they did last year. And you may find out that it's quite a pattern. Maybe they do most of their shopping throughout the year exactly on holiday season, and they will be the most valuable for you in terms of conversions. So you may want to identify any shopping patterns you notice as well. So it's clear now that in e-commerce, granular customer segmentation is important. And at this point, you may have this question. So how do you do this? How do you segment your customers? So technically, you may do it at the basis of two things. So you either segment your customers by their attributes, these more static characteristics that you can pull from different data sources. This may, this may be done in the most simple way. When, for example, you ask um, your newly registered users in the app of their date of birth so that you can target them with a birthday offer in the corresponding month. Or you make, make it a little bit more advanced, and that's what I recommend you do. I recommend you connect any data sources you have available so that you can create a more advanced segmentation where you can check whether this just registered customer in your e-commerce app has actually any track record of being your frequent offline customer, because certainly you want to treat these kind of customers differently. And then you may also segment your audience by their behavior. And here I mean specifically their in-app activity that you can track easily in your app. And certainly it will be even a more granular segmentation if you combine these criteria. So let me show you how it works in practice. So here, I'm showing uh, some simple segmentation and messaging flows from our beautiful Bushwush Customer Journey Builder tool. If you haven't tried it yet, I highly recommend you do it because personally, I adore it. So here we have those customers born in December. Yeah, right now we're talking about the holiday season, but you you may remember some of your acquaintances maybe that are born in December at, and they always feel kind of missed that everyone is talking Christmas and New Year, but they have a birthday. They want they want to be treated like people who have a birthday actually. So you want to be a nice uh, e-commerce company to them. You may want to target them with a birthday wish list. Some you may suggest them some recommended items that they may wish to. Uh, obtain for their birthday. And then we have those a little bit more advanced segmentation where we check. First, we start our segmentation sequence by checking all the customers that have just installed your app. And then we want to specify if we have any data that they used to buy something from our offline store, if we have any. And if they, if they have, then we want to greet them with a message uh, notifying them that they actually have some reward points. Maybe they have been our loyalty program member and they can still use those reward points in our e-commerce app as well. Or if we have not, we have no data on their um, previous purchases, we will approach them with a simple onboarding message suggesting them to join our loyalty program in the first place. 
Another example, you may want to target your frequent buyers because you expect that during the holiday season, they're the most uh, probable to convert as well. Well, okay, we'll target them. We'll wait until they open the application and then we'll see if they have anything added to their favorites. If they think about uh, purchasing, purchasing anything particular themselves. So if they have, then you may show them an in-app message with the very same item that they have added to their favorites. If they have not, we may suggest them something recommended with our internal app engine. What happens if we see that those frequent buyers have not opened our app? Well, we may do the same thing here. We may still want to check if they have anything added to their favorites, but we'll approach them via a different channel. We may send them a push notification, whether we will be promoting either one of those favorite items or just uh, another recommended product. So, and I may have made quite a spoiler already uh, in terms of what comes as the next step. So the next step should be certainly personalization because we're not paying that much attention to segmentation just to send generic messages to all of our customers. And here we have two interesting points that we know from the service. The first thing is that customers expect the technology to always work. And the second thing is that they will only notice that the technology exists at all when it stops working. I guess it's like in one of those sayings when um, someone is dressed perfectly or the design is that perfect that you don't even notice that. So the same is applied to mobile messaging. You want it to be that perfectly fitted to your customer that they won't even question. They won't even ask themselves, why did I receive this message in the first place? What will be your reward here? Well. 40% of customers state that they will spend more if they receive any so precisely personalized recommendations from an e-commerce app. And here's an interesting thing. Certainly personalization for e-commerce apps is a lot more complex than just uh, sending a message that would say, hey, Jan, here's your offer. It may be as interesting as the choice of um, channels. So for example, when we target a specific segment, we want to make sure if they have given us permissions to send them push notifications, because if they haven't opted in for our push notifications, that message that we're sending them, that won't be heard and we want to be heard, right? So we'll figure out and to those customers who have opted in for push notifications. So we're approaching them via this channel. If they have, have not, then we may approach them via email and send the very same message, but via the channel that we have access to. And then we'll wait for our app to be open. And it's not enough to have the right to send push notifications to the user in theory. We want it to be actually opened. And in Pushwatch customer journey building, you can actually check if your push notification was opened or was not. And here's what happened. Here, here's what happens. If a user has clicked on your push notification, well, that's nice. You're going to show them an in-app message where you would explain them the details of your holiday offer and you will direct them to a specific product page dedicated to this offer. And if they have not, well, no problem at all. You, you may still access them via email. And surely it's nice to have a choice of channel to find the one that fits your user perfectly. But it's even better when you can create uh, the entire funnel where first you will send a more top of the funnel content for example, you may want to announce the upcoming holiday collection in an email, which is a more extensive format, so you may be more descriptive about everything. Then, uh, after a while, you may send them a more actionable push where you would uh, call users to specific action to open your app, to check out the uh, 
the particular items of this new collection. And then you'll see, if they're interested, you may want to make them even a more detailed offer when where you would present them the items they are the most likely to buy. If they're not that interested in that uh, collection in the first place, you may want to create a sense of urgency. And then you'll say like, hey, okay, the only thing that may motivate you is probably the limited time frame. So here's the deal. Special prices for the pre-order and you'll see what happens. Yeah, and actually, although our initial and our primary goal is always to convert, it's interesting that mobile messaging should not and it doesn't normally stop at the point of the order. Because there, we remember that customer experience may all come down to mobile messaging. And we want to accompany our customer uh, to the point when they're completely happy with it, with the experience. So we want to follow them with service messaging, where we'll give them the details of their order, where we'll tell them where their uh, parcel is in the pickup point if they chose this method of delivery. We may inform them of any troubles or inconveniences, such as the changes in the working hours of that exact pickup point. We may want to send them any transactional details, such as electronic receipts for our emails. We still want to be there. And even then, our communication doesn't end because after the purchase, we want them to complete another purchase. So as soon as the customer has triggered the purchase completed event, you may want to wait for a while and then send them a thank, thank you note and send them another promo code that they will only get to use with the next purchase. And here, once again, you may track if they have actually opened that message or not and differentiate uh, your, your further communications accordingly. Do you think that communications, your communications with a customer will end with the end of the holiday season? Not yet, because even if you've just started communicating um, and engaging uh, your existing customer base, that's seriously only during this holiday season you may still want to keep communicating and keep converting them when the holiday season ends because after the black friday and cyber monday and all these end of the year holidays here come ongoing campaigns that you may launch throughout the entire year and one of the great ideas is to check which customers have actually purchased some replenishable items from your store. Imagine some skincare routine or some chemicals for house cleaning, anything that they may want to reorder in the future. And you may send them a simple push and show that to make the same order, but probably for the full price and not the discounted one, uh, they may do as little as click one button or maybe two. So lots of points that we've covered so far. The main uh, things that I would like you to try um, this holiday season is that probably instead of investing that much money and attention to the acquisition stage, probably you want to focus on engaging your existing customer base because they're the ones most likely to convert. Then I want you to pay attention to the segmentation. And certainly you want to personalize your messaging with those particular segments. And this applies to your choice of channels, to your product recommendations, whatever you may come up with. And here, even better, you want to go omni-channel because it will create multiple touch points with your customer and it will help you synchronize your offers across the channels. And as a result, it will help you get the optimum results. And yeah, once again, even if you've only started engagement and retention campaigns this holiday season, this may actually be the beginning of a beautiful friendship between you and your customers. And I wish you to keep it going when the holiday season ends as well. So this is 
pretty much of it, uh, what I wanted to tell you today. So if you have any questions on the presentation, you're free to ask them in the chat. We'll make sure to cover them at the end of our presentation. And I'm handing over the mic to Barbara. Let's go. Thank you so much, Alina. I think there's a lot that that's important to connect, um, thinking about the e-commerce e -commerce journey and our um, journey creating content too. Um, so we talked a lot about what does it mean to, to create that journey to make sure you you touch all those points um, when creating that uh, journey in your e-commerce and highlighting the importance of the mobile applications and the content to push and remember, basically remember they, remember your audience, hey, we're here. And content in this entire uh, system of e-commerce and online and um, even the omni-channel omni system, content is critical to support the online touch points during the holiday season, but the, the physical touch points too, because you want to remember your audience that you're available everywhere. And one, one exercise that I think it's important for everyone that's trying to understand the best content for each stage of the journey is to remember who's the person that's behind that holiday shopping. What do they want? What's happening with them? And I think since COVID has hit the world and things have, have shifted in pretty much every single um, part of our lives, um, we saw last year what happened with uh, the holiday shopping and when people had, had to shift to online purchases instead of the, the going to the stores and having that, uh, the entire system that they used to have. Uh, there's a couple of things when it comes to behavior that, that, that have changed too, that have shifted a little bit. And it's important to address this because this become, become uh, very important points to address when creating content uh, to start a conversation with your audience in, uh, in about what they're going to buy as a holiday gift or when they're ready for a conversion. But the first thing is the expectation that everyone has for holiday shopping. And I would love to have everyone in like a larger audience just to understand the expectations but it's important to understand that there's a huge expectation behind every single one of our customers um, as myself as a customer i already have my black friday list and my holiday shopping for my house for my family gifts and everything else so there's a lot of exp expectation built behind this specific event in the year we we are facing and I think this has become one of the important points for uh, our customers doing this, this journey is time and safety. So the time that they're going to take to, uh, to buy, uh, to, to enjoy the Black Friday and buy whatever they need to buy, but also how much time am I going to need to complete that purchase, to have that product in my house? How is it going to happen? Are we going to have del uh, delays? Everything's going to be delivered and I'm going to find everything. And safety as well. We're all very much concerned about uh, going out in public still and making sure we're safe. And we're also evaluating the other opportunities. That's why uh, the online has grown so much. Digital channels have become a place to inspire and to do some research. So even though I might go to the store to buy something, I'm going to research online or even when I go to Pinterest to see if there's any ideas for my holiday gifts or if I have an inspiration on Instagram that a company that I like uh, may have put together to help me understand any new releases, any new products or anything like that. So digital channels, are, the, uh, are becoming a very heavy starting point for that problem or that solution that I'm finding. And also the convenience. It's thinking about the expectation and time and safety is very convenient to rely on uh, online uh, touch points and purchase points too. Uh, I think Google has done a lot of research around the behavior that users have um, 
around the holiday shopping and re online retail and the digital role in shopping has been cemented. So since last year, things are very more, um, are more structured. People are relying more on digital and more than 70% of the survey participants that they have, um, have reported that their shopping journey involved online touch points. So it's not just a matter of going to buy, but at some point I researched, I looked for something to inspire, I saved something on my shopping cart, something happened on my online points. And one of the things that's critical doing any um, timely event that we have that creates that expectation and has a significant amount of time that we have to build those connections and make sure uh, we have that return on investment back. Creating the connections with our audience in holiday season is critical. And this is a graph that also Think the Google released last year to kind of show how the buildup, like the phases of the online shopping happened. Um, this was 2019 on the Black Friday research. So 2019 feels like a long time ago. I know that. Um, and it feels like it's it could have shifted a little bit, but there's a certain time that the buildup is critical. So you have to get people ready for the Black Friday season, the holiday shopping. One of my favorite uh, events is always the Halloween time because Halloween is just one day that we have to show up some creative ideas and get people to buy products and cook something and enjoy the party and anything like that. And it's interesting because there's a buildup for Halloween that comes every year. And there's a time of craze uh, for the holiday shopping, for example, it must be the, the Black Friday week or the, the week before Christmas. There's a time to kind of like engage the audience and start bringing up those points to build them up, to get them ready, to get them thinking about what do they want, what they're looking for, what do they need, the craze, and also the last call. So those last days and last emails that you have like two hours left. So that's really important to understand and create the, these connections in this um, micro moment that we face in a couple uh, of weeks. And when we think about creating those connections and what's the the audience behind is looking for what's their behavior what do they want what do they need the content strategy for the holidays it's important to understand a couple of significant pillars to build that strategy that goes for the build-up for doing the event and uh, once the holiday season ends and you want to make sure uh, customers are still with you so to begin with, and it's really important, and not only for the holidays, any content strategy that you're developing, any content that you're building out for your e-commerce or any other campaign you have for your company, make sure you're aware of the industry trend reports. Uh, there's a lot of really great uh, reports that, especially during this time of the year, there are reporting things for next year that talk about specific behaviors and anticipating trends for uh, retail and consumer goods and food, beverage, shopping, anything. It's really important because you can an anticipate those um, during the holiday season and get people aware of what's coming next. And it's a, those are a very reliable source like WGNS, SN, and even Google with all the reports that they're uh, they're they're, they're showing uh, PwC. There's a lot of industry trends that it's in really important that you follow. Mapping out the essential keywords to your business. Uh, this is related to um, SEO strategies. Um, SEO coming with content together to make sure we deliver the right content and the content that we need to achieve our goals. But it's also it, it's important to understand and map out those keywords that are essential to your business and how they're related to the types of research around the journey. So what are the keywords that are essential to your um, to your content strategy that are important to an awareness 
content that you're going to develop and it's just informational or any transaction um, keywords that you should create content or prepare a page on your e-commerce to make sure when people land, they're just looking for uh, a place that they want to do a transaction, buy right away something, it's ready and it's optimized. So mapping the keywords and mapping those keywords, thinking about all the, the, the central stages of the funnel uh, for your customer journey and also the types of research people are going to go through the entire process. Survey your audience to anticipate needs. Ask them, send an email and ask them, how is the holiday shop shopping going? What's the expectation for this year? Are you gonna go out or are you gonna stay like last year? What are you looking for? Are you looking for gifts, uh, good deals for yourself? Ask them what they want, what they need and match that with industry reports and any other data that you might have that help you understand and shape that behavior. Um, for your customer. Take a deep dive in your own stats. So any metrics that you have from last year, any the, any of the campaigns that you have done last year, and for the past a couple of months, if you are able to see how um, your audience is behaving into a certain post, a certain content that you have that's related to any of the strategies for the Black Friday, Black Friday content or products, Make sure you revisit them and understand what those metrics are telling you. Is there an opportunity that you could pursue? Is there anything that you have done last year? Uh, any big learnings that you could bring to this year and revisit and revamp that? It turned into big opportunities. Audit the content that you have. So any posts that you have from last year, any pages, any landing pages, anything that you have created already and can be reused and it could have some improvement, or any other areas that you find any gaps and can create new net content, go ahead and audit that content because it's not just about creating net new, but there's a lot of opportunities and improvements from learnings from our other campaigns. Optimization is huge. So every evergreen content that you might have right now that resonates with the holiday season, preparing for shopping, safety, um, privacy, credit card, or any other ideas about buying gifts for your significant one, relatives, anything that's evergreen, make sure you optimize. And it has that fresh batch of content that can be used and recognized um, by uh, our little web spiders. Make sure all your digital channels are mobile friendly. Elena was talking about a lot of what can we do on mobile marketing and make sure you reach your customer on their mobile, uh, but make sure your digital channels, your blog, uh, your e-commerce, um, everything that you have, all the channels that you have on mobile friendly. Avoid any major updates on your e-commerce. So anything that's major, any updates, any improvements that would need a lot of testing and would be bigger than you were expecting or could hurt the experience, avoid that because you don't want to hurt the experience of the person that's going through your website, right? Update any title tags and meta descriptions that you have right now to match um, the content that's being on your blog or on your site uh, to take opportunities from there too. And when it comes to content planning and content creation, I like to take a step back and remind me and remind the audience and remind my customers about the importance of understanding um, what's going on right now, what's the priorities, and get everything that we saw in industry trends and all and in our website, any product release that uh, we're gonna have this year that stands out and it's a big win for the company and for the customer and brainstorm ideas that we can stand out from our competitors. Um, get your team, team together, research what other people are doing, any other industries are doing too. You don't have to look just in your competitors, but I myself as a content uh, strategist, I look a lot into other industries to see what they're doing and my um, I can bring another meaning to uh, the industry that I'm working with. Make sure the topics are aligned with our goals. So when we create and when we plan, keep in mind that the goal that you have for this year, the sales and 
how much you want to grow, make sure the topics for each stage of the funnel um, is very much aligned with your goals. Have a clear vision of your priorities. Black Friday seems like a good day to sell everything that you have and send all the possible messages that you could. But we have to understand the priorities and the time that you have in the holiday season, which is a critical time and yet yeah, a short time. So make sure you understand the priorities and your goals and make those make sure those are aligned. This is my favorite one. Get creative. Um, we are in a in such an age and we are experiencing so many things right now in the world relying so much on digital but yeah there's a lot of emotions there's a lot of things happening that we can address and and show to our customers that we understand what they're going through so that empathy that we called out last year um the beginning of the pandemic those emotions during the holiday season they increase and it's good to see that uh, companies understand that I am building uh, a hybrid home office for me and or there's a special uh, this will be the first holiday season that we're going to see uh, our families together more so than last year so it's important to address those emotions and have that look and feel of the holiday season so explore formats like visuals imagery um, your wording and in social channels to make sure you deliver content that matches that feel and look and what they're looking for. Plan ahead for all the resources that you need. So make sure if you have an in-house team or if you need a vendor, make sure you plan ahead with them um, how to create that content and make sure everything is ready when you go to distribution. So when you're creating your uh, a calendar that's going to follow those micro moments for each one of the holidays, the Black Friday, the Cyber Week, um, the pre, the 12 days of Christmas, Christmas, New Year, uh, make sure that everything is ready and planned on a calendar uh, that's going to address those micro moments, those contents for each one of the channels that you chose to uh, work with this season and map out the ideal channels to distribute, distribute them and keep everything consistent. So this is the time that uh, we have to make sure we're there. We have to make sure we have the best deals with them and we want to help them have a really got good holiday season. And once again, I've said before, but I really want to highlight the timing for this time of the year is very, very, very critical. So when you're developing your content strategy, think about all the process that goes through the research, um, the, the resources that you're going to need, and if it's in-house, if it's a partner, and the calendar that you want to build, do you, have, um, uh, do you have everything you're ready to manage the calendar to uh, keep following the metrics throughout those days? So timing is critical, and you have to be there. So plan ahead. This is really, really, really important. And you want to make sure you're there with everything that you have planned. One thing that it's really important when we're thinking about planning that content and going through all those phases of the content strategy, when you want content, you want the full journey. So there's a journey that goes before someone uh, lands on your e-commerce or downloads the app. It could start with the social micro content on Instagram, on Pinterest, or any other channel that fits well with your audience. It could start with a blog post that you're telling them to be careful with um, cyber security and credit cards online, um, how to do a holiday shopping with a big family or anything like that. But there's a content that works really well in different stages of the journey, but creating multiple formats and making sure you have uh, the right message in different formats for each channel, for each stage of the content, um, for each stage of your journey, allows you to create a full content experience. So you're with them delivering the right content at the right time um, in every stage of the journey. So when you're mapping the content to your customer journey, um, there are four stages that I find it critical and it's important to understand and match those stages to 
the main goal that we have there with the right format, for example. So when we're thinking about exposure and awareness, so we are, they're not even yet in our e-commerce or haven't even downloaded our app. The goal here is to make sure that we capture uh, that we capture their attention. So they know who we are, they know we're here, and we're trying to tell them uh, the new trends for next year, there's a new releases on music, anything that's going to exposure them to something that you can help uh, to, to a certain problem that you could solve. So example, um, I'm building a, a new home office for me. So I would love to see how to create the perfect um, focus space at home that could be focused when I'm not working, but when, when I am working works well for me to stay quiet and, and work. But um, that could be a very, very, very top of the funnel just to create awareness of, hey, we have the best ideas for you. When we move to the consideration phase, this is where we want to produce content that encourages the users to take interest in your brand. So I know that they told me that if I use XYZ to create a focus space at home, but do I have the right computer? So another, uh, this is an opportunity to show them, hey, we have the right tools for the problem that, you're, that you uh, have of creating a perfect space at home. Um, one of the tips that I gave you was to buy a new computer. What about these computers here? In my opinion, as an industry uh, expert, these are the best that will work good for a hybrid um, approach next year. And then we help them move to the purchase phase. This is where we convert them. This is where the buy. So uh, it's about that personalized email, their personalized content, that personalized ad that reminds them of, hey, this is the best computer for your needs. This is the best, um, the best option for uh, your house next year. So make sure you come see it. And here's a discount from this for this holiday season. And in the end, once they make the purchase, uh, the focus will be on retention and loyalty. And we want to keep reminding them that we're here and make new transactions. And that could be by sending holiday newsletters, keep targeting them in the year of the, the end of the year campaigns, or send any personalized recommendations, any pers personalized ads. Hey, remember you bought a computer. How about a, how about a new keyboard? Um, how about new earbuds? So to keep that cycle going, to feed them new content. It's important once you understand your audience and the right content that you want to have, you match that. And I think I, I love to say that word match because we're trying to put everything in this, this puzzle, all of these pieces. But think about the measurement plan that you have. So have a clear understanding of the business objectives and goals for the holiday season. So what, what's important for you? What's your goal as a business for this holiday season? Once you have that, what are the strategies that you're going to take place to achieve those goals? What are the KPIs that you're going to track throughout the season to make sure you are on target and uh, the campaigns and everything that you've created so far is successful? And if not, how are you going to know when you need to adjust them? And what are the targets for those KPIs that you have chosen? I have here a list of a, a couple of important KPIs for each stage of the journey, um, for each uh, business, for each industry, and for, for each goal that your company has. They might differ a little bit, but think about when we're talking about exposure and awareness, make sure you, ha you have set targets for the traffic, your website traffic, your blog traffic, the source of the traffic, where people are coming from more, are my emails working better than my social channels or my paid ads, where people are finding me and should I invest more in those channels? Those unique page views, the time that people are spending on your e-commerce, they're spending a lot of time, they're going back and forth. Uh, new visitors that you have, newsletter subscription. I myself a big newsletter crazy doing black friday shopping it could be a channel that you should watch if people are coming more and want to receive more discounts informations the shares comments and new interactions on your social channels and overall the growth that you have compared to last year compared to three months ago 
what had hap what have happened to your channels. When we talk about the consideration phase, make sure you understand the CTR, the click through rate, the cost per lead, cost per click, and overall the conversion rates, um, if they are what you have set or not. When it comes to purchase, the number of sales, are we hitting those sales goals? Uh, what's the customer lifetime value? What's the average order value? What's the return on advertising and spend that you had so far based on how much you have sold? And retention and loyalty, NP, NPS, or any other opportunity that you have to understand customer satisfaction, uh, CSAT, NPS, or any other one, and referrals to are people sending you to new customers to start a new cycle. So make sure to each one of those phases, you have the right KPIs for your goals, and you have set targets to based on the overall goal. And there, this is... Coming, this is a list of mistakes that you should avoid overall in the Black Friday or any holiday season campaign, thinking about not only the content, but overall, the overall campaign. It's a blog post that Rock created uh, last year, and I have the link here if you're interested in reading, but make sure to focus not only on discounts. It's not just about offering discounts, but the entire structure that you're going to have and the right deals and the personalized messages, targeting the wrong customers, understand your audience, take all the data that you have in and target the right ones with the organic or paid um, strategies that you have. Diversify those audience. Make sure you're, you have the right message for different audience that you might target. Plan ahead. I cannot highlight enough the importance of planning not only your content strategy, but the entire campaign. The campaign time is critical. Um, abandoned carts that sit on your e-commerce, make sure to come back and remind those customers about it, and that so that doesn't hurt your uh, inventory and also uh, bring customers to reach that conversion point. Um, Audiences are not going to fend, them, fed from the, fend from themselves, so make sure you're there for them. And don't create just holiday offers. Create bigger plans and do not underestimate the online sales. We have seen this year and we cannot emphasize enough. Uh, there's an omni-channel lead and make sure your online channels are ready. Um, Fulfill a campaign, make sure you have a campaign, a message, and everything set in place for this season. Like I said before, this is a big time of the year for, uh, for us as consumers and for us as companies. Collect the customer data before, analyze the data that you have before, and collect that um, later on because they're important learnings. Uh, do not wait to launch campaigns. As soon as you're ready, launch the campaigns and make adjustment as needed. Urgency, it's not create itself. There's a lot of companies fighting for the attention and customers are not only come to you, they're gonna research and they're gonna look and they're gonna compare. Everything is at their fingertips. Cyber Monday's there, Cyber Week's there. Holiday season doesn't end with Black Friday and do not be unrealistic with the goals that you're targeting and the capacity that you have. It's better to do something that's going to resonate with your audience really well, too. And before we wrap up and go to some Q&A, these are some useful resources that we want to share with you. We're going to make sure we send out this deck so you can take a step back and look at through everything that Alina and I have shared with you so far. But this is uh, how the interactive content it's helpful for your um, your marketing strategy, content strategies that will work well with sales enablement, um, conversion for paying customer, existing customers, and map out, streamline your marketing activities across channels. Um, before we go ahead, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Push Push, for the, the, the partnership. Any questions, any suggestions, anything that you have for us so far? Yeah, thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Elena. I think it was very uh, insightful today. 
Um, just to deep, deep dive to the um, uh, topic, I just would like to uh, ask two questions. Uh, so we are saying that we are in the very active time, uh, Black Friday, then holiday rush, and then it's important to go omni-channel. But the question is, uh, um, if there is a, an ideal channel um, where uh, any marketer could uh, uh, create and distribute the content for their particular business, what do you think here? You want to take that alina or should i take <laughs> well how would you prefer i guess i guess we could we could make quite a discussion out of that because yeah. i see that to this question there is no right or wrong answer and it looks like it's more of a question to your business's customer because that's what you're going to research the ideal channel for you is the one where you find the most customers and then it depends on your goals, where, whether it's ideal in terms of attracting, whether it's ideal in terms of getting them more interested and finally converting them. So then you probably want to research in terms of the metrics. So how do, do the metrics correlate with the efforts, with the, some budget investments in those channels? So at the end of the day, we arrive at your... Um, ROI and what has been uh, trendy and quite reasonable to look at is also the so-called ROX, return on experience. In some cases, you may want to look at this as well. And then I would certainly say do some experimentation. If you don't know the exact question, the exact answer to this question yet, Probably it makes sense to do some A-B testing where you would A-B test both channels and messaging and audiences. Hopefully not at the same time. You would do some separated tests for all of that and you'll finally find your answer. What do you think, Barbara? What would you recommend if a customer came to you with such a question? I would defer to you because your answer was just perfect. But I... I it's my favorite answer in marketing, like everything depends and please test it out. And there's a lot of people that think one channel fits perfectly their strategy and some people are against that. And it's like, I should create for all of the channels, not like that. So I think it's a matter of if it's the first time that they're doing something like that to create at their capacity and do at least a small research to understand what are their audiences at right now? Do that testing, like you said, do some A-B testing with what's um, what's at their capacity and and later, and later refine and create new opportunities. But I agree 100% with you. It's about understanding the audience and testing. Testing never ends. You're going to test, test, test. And it could be yeah. something small too, like during some time of the year, one channel works better than the other. Uh, we lost Barbara. Barbara, are you yeah. here? You're frozen. Okay, so um, if you like, we can uh, discuss a little bit the next question, uh, also interesting one. So we talked a lot about the um, conversion of the existing customers, uh, about repeat mm -hmm. purchases. How about uh, attracting uh, uh, first time conversions? What we can do here uh, using our content marketing strategy? Well, that's actually interesting because if you take another look uh, on the framework on the points of the strategy that I highlighted in my presentation, you would see that they fit quite well to targeting first time, uh, first time customers as well. Because uh, if you get back to that idea of putting your customers into different categories, you will see that even among your existing customer base, even in that kind of closed uh, audience of your e-commerce app users, you will have a good share of those who haven't converted yet, who have only been browse, browsing your products. And uh, especially during the holiday season, as Barbara mentioned, it's it's like a normal part of the process. There, there are many customers who are just searching, who are just 
looking into what is there in the market. So I can bet that you have a good share of them and the same principle of uh, analyzing your data from whatever, from all and any uh, data sources that you have. Analyzing all this data will do only good to you. And then you want to create those specific segments. Here may be the, mm, the problem because probably if it's if they haven't converted yet, maybe they haven't even um, triggered too much of uh, events in your app. So you don't have that much behavioral data on them. But still here, once again, I insist that you try uh, connecting uh, and pulling data from any external sources that you have available. And then there goes the personalization and any creative ideas that you may come up with in terms of channels and copies and imagery, whatever. Okay. Yeah, it's like uh, more about the overall uh, custom experience, right? So because it's very important to make this first impression uh, perfect because you will never have another chance to, to give uh, the first impression, right? So we need to be very careful about how to uh, show our brand. Uh, from the very uh, um, pleasant side and uh, try to provide this perfect experience. So, yeah, Barbara, uh, if you would like to add something here, because we were talking about um, how to uh, how content marketing can help um, to attract first time conversions uh, for e-commerce. I think it's I, I can't I apologize for my my connection, but it was it's content marketing, it's, it's very, very, very important to create that awareness and create that exposure that we're, we're hoping for in, in not for only just newer brands, but to existing brands too. So in terms of exposure and awareness, content marketing is critical and to develop those relationships to, to make sure like, yes, uh, I'm here and my brand stands for this. This is our purpose. This is what we're here to help you solve. So it's 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 critical. Everybody that talks to me about like brand and create, you start creating that connections and driving people to that stage. I'm always like, what's your content plan? What are you doing to make sure like you tell people that you're here? So I 100% agree with you. Okay, that sounds great. So uh, thank you uh, again for your presentations. I think like all marketers are now very equipped with the um, uh, tricks uh, that we can uh, implement already for Black Friday, then for Cyber Monday, for holiday season. Uh, and um, mm, thank you for everybody who was watching us today. Um, I do invite you to visit uh, uh, Push Push blog uh, and also rock, uh, content blog because we have uh, uh, plenty of uh, interesting, useful content there. Uh, and um, hope to see you in our future webinars. Thank you so much so for having us. It's been a pleasure us. to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you. Have a great day. See you next Bye. time. Enjoy your day. Bye. Bye. Bye.